Socialism and capitalism are key ideas that you need to understand if you are going to have the foggiest clue what Priestley's message is for the audience or what the characters represent in an inspector calls. The series was written in 1945 by the socialist writer and broadcaster J.B. Priestley and his main aim was to convince the post-World War II audience of the benefits of socialism and encourage particularly the younger generation to vote for the Labour Party, which is typically a socialist party, and to leave behind the predominantly capitalist ideals, which he felt were very bad and detrimental to society and were very popular in 1912. So he was hoping that moving forward, people would take on more socialist ideals and believe in socialism more moving on. So in order to understand the play and what Priestley was talking about within the play and how the characters react to the inspector, we do need to understand what capitalism is, what socialism is and the difference between the two. Capitalism is based on private ownership and what that basically means is if you imagine different companies and businesses, they can be owned by one individual and any money that the, the business makes goes to that individual. So Mr. Burling owns Burling & Co and any profit which that company makes is Mr. Burling's. So let's imagine that we have three people. So person one is the richest, they're a factory owner, similar to Mr. Burling. Person two is the second richest, so they might have a job like managing the factory. Whilst person three is the person who actually makes the stuff in the factory. So somebody like Eva Smith and they are going to be the poorest person. There is the belief that you firstly own and have private property. Um, everything that you have is yours and you are entitled to do with it what you want, that kind of thing. But there's also the freedom to have competition. And what that means is that we can have lots of different companies who do the same thing. So, for instance, if you look at electricity suppliers or gas suppliers, there's loads of different companies who pretty much do the same thing or Internet providers. And then you go to the um, price comparison websites and you can choose the cheapest one for you or the most the best profit um, idea for you. This is because capitalism is the freedom to compete so that you can have the same businesses, the same people doing the same thing and it's up to people to choose where they spend their money or where their money goes basically. Back to our three people we have um, basically like a game of Monopoly, that you have three people playing a game of Monopoly. The difference is in capitalism, person one will start with three times as much money as person three because they are wealthier, they have more privilege, they have more power within this game. Um, however, it can work out well for poor people. So it could be player one loses some of its money and has to give it to player three. So player three becomes richer during the game of Monopoly and player one becomes poorer. However, it is more likely to work in the opposite way. Because player one has more money to start off with, they're more likely to be able to buy more hotels and houses, etc. Um, to make more money for themselves. And it tends to mean that the poorest people end up giving their money to the richest people. So you have what is known as kind of a divide between the richest and the poorest, and that the competition within capitalism tends to result in a big gap between the richest and wealthiest people in the world who tend to get, end up getting richer in the competition and the poorest people in the world who end up getting poorer. This headline, for instance, um, is referring to the 1%, so that is kind of very small group of people who have the same amount of money as half of the world. So we are talking billions of people being as wealthy as like 100 people because those hundred people are incredibly rich. 
Within an inspector calls, Mr. Burling is the principal char capitalist character. He is openly only interested in himself and making more money. He talks about, quote, the interest of capital. Remember, capital means money and is excited about Gerald and Sheila's engagement because he believes that it will lead to, quote, lower costs and higher prices. So that basically means that he is going to get wealthier. And the higher prices would mean that the poor people who are buying his stuff are going to become poorer. That's where that competition comes in. Gerald is also a capitalist because he agrees with Mr. Burling. So he says things like, here, here, and I would have done the same. Mrs. Burling is also a capitalist. However, because she's a woman, she's slightly different to Gerald and Mr. Burling. So she wouldn't be expected to have a job of her own or money of her own. Her money would be her husband's, basically. Um, but instead, she shows her capitalism through her reluctance to actually part with the charity organisation's money. So even though it's not directly her own money, she's very reluctant to hand it over to Eva Smith because she feels she is undeserving of this money. A 21st century equivalent of Mr. Burling would be Jeff Bezos. I never know how to say his name. Apologies if that's incorrect. Jeff. Um, who at over a hundred billion dollars is currently the world's richest man. He is the CEO of Amazon. So that online shop which sells just about everything you could imagine. He has the kind of money that is realistically beyond most people's comprehension, let alone being able to have one day. We're talking about one person having the equivalent wealth of approximately three million ordinary people living in America. We're not talking about three million people who live in the poorest countries of the world. We're talking about three million people who live in one of the richest um, countries in the world. He is the equivalent wealth to those. Um, however, Amazon are plagued by reports and strikes at the ground level of their company. So this is a headline talking about how working in their work warehouse or their distribution centres, so that's where they pack the things we buy off Amazon, that is awful because they have low pay and very harsh working conditions. So that's a photograph of people striking at Amazon. And we have the headline here that being homeless is better than working for Amazon. There's quite harsh reports about what life is like for people who are at the lowest paid jobs in Amazon. Whilst Mr. Bezos, or Jeff, I should just call him, um, is becoming increasingly wealthier. The people who are working in his warehouses are actually uh, allegedly in quite poor conditions. Socialism, however, is based on government regulated ownership. So in capitalism, it was private ownership. So Jeff owns his own company and owns... Um, and decides what the profits will be going on, decides what the company will be selling, etc. It's all up to him. However, in socialism, it's different because there's less focus on the individual person and more focus on the collective group. And that group is known as a society. Um, and it's made up of everyone, regardless of their age, their gender, their class, their income. Everybody is part of this group. And if they are treated kind of differently depending on their initial wealth. In capitalism, when they were playing Monopoly, player one started off with three times as much as player three. In socialism, we have the introduction of the government controlling some ownership through people paying taxes. So that the richest people in society would pay more in taxes to the government who would then distribute the money and aid equally to those who need it. And you have the start of something that is known as the welfare state. The welfare state was founded shortly after World War II and it was something that Priestley, the playwright of an Inspector Calls, was really heavily involved in and something that he deeply believed in. And what the welfare state meant was that taxes, which were paid by everybody, the richest and the poorest, would go to the government and then the government would redistribute those taxes to public services. Rich people would pay more tax than poor people. 
However, the amount of tax which would then go to systems like schooling and free education for everybody or healthcare and the foundation of the NHS meant that rich people and poor people would receive the same service when they went to these state schools or to a hospital, which was an NHS hospital. And it wasn't about how much money you put in, which would determine the level of service that you would receive. Everybody got the same service. It just meant that rich people who paid more tax would have put in more money and contributed more to society financially than the poorer people would. But it wouldn't mean that if you went into the hospital, the rich people would be in a private ward and the poor people would be in a basement somewhere. But actually, everybody would have the same level of health care, that it was equal for everybody, regardless of their income. So. Just to sum up that socialism aims to create a welfare state so that you are providing things like healthcare, education, like social workers, um, that kind of thing. They're paid for by taxes, which is everybody pays, but it's just the higher taxes are on businesses and rich people. They would pay more than ordinary workers within a factory setting, for instance, and that it's aiming for a shared ownership of companies and services as they're funded by the taxpayers. So in capitalism, you would have the factory owner, like Mr. Burling, who would take the profit. In socialism, when there's profit, it would be reinvested within that service to improve it. It wouldn't be kind of split off and given up to individual members. So the Labour Party in the UK are the party, political party, which are typically associated with socialism. And on the screen, there is a poster from one of the Labour Party's election campaigns, and they are talking about how it is for public ownership, not private monopoly. And this is a direct reference to that um, conflict between socialism and capitalism, that socialists believe in a collective effort, that it is should be beneficial to everybody, regardless of their income rather than just benefiting the people who are richest. From the rich people's perspective, you need to understand that um, they would be taxed quite heavily in a socialist system and that they are losing control basically of where their money goes. So if you imagine having that money in monopoly and some of it being taken off you before you even start playing and then being split up amongst the other players, some People might feel that that is unfair because they haven't chosen to give their money. They are just having it taken off them before it even begins, basically. Um, when Priestley was writing an inspector calls in 1945, it was on the verge of a general election where the Labour Party won. And Clement Attlee, who's a Labour politician, was elected prime minister and it was a big shift from the Conservative government previously because it introduced the welfare state and this is where we get things like the NHS from that was introduced in 1947 and we had free health care which is free at the point of service regardless of how much you earn or how much you're worth or what class you're from you get the same service as everybody else and this is one of the socialist ideals which JB Priestley fought for and really strongly believed in. In an inspector calls, the principal socialist character in the play is Inspector Gould, and some people actually say that he symbolises socialism. And he's there to question the Burning family, but also the audience about how their actions have impacted Eva Smith and other working class people. And they have consequences beyond their understanding that they even realise how much of an impact that they're having on these people's lives. He reminds us that we are, quote, members of one body, we're responsible for one another. These are all socialist ideals, this idea of being connected to one another rather than being an individual just by yourself, which is what Mr. Burling believes in. Eric is quietly socialist at the start of the play. So we have this stage direction that he is half shy, half assertive, and that assertiveness refers to his willingness to take on his father's capitalist views and to argue his opinion 
and as the play progresses, he, his assertiveness does increase and he's openly tackling and arguing with his parents and telling them that they're wrong by the end of the play. Sheila almost converts from capitalism to socialism um, because of the inspector's influence. She's quite materialistic at the start of the play, so she's very excited about being engaged and having an engagement ring. Um, and she also openly admits to using her influence to get Eva Smith fired. By the end of the play, she's very apologetic about what she's done. She realises that what she did was wrong and she says that she would never do it again. So this is an example of a socialist organisation. The GMB union, which is in the small bit here, is a trade union and trade unions work to protect the rights of workers within large organisations. So for pretty much every profession, there is a union. So as a teacher, I have the option to join various unions and I would pay for my membership. And then if I needed to be protected or I needed help or assistance with something to do with my employment, then I could contact my union and they would help me and support me. And here, the GMB union is acting in a similar way to Inspector Ghoul. They are highlighting the knock on effects of Amazon not paying their way. So Amazon have avoided paying £90 million worth of tax that they should have paid. Um, and here the union is highlighting that had Amazon paid that amount of tax, then they could have funded, the government could have funded an extra 2,400 nurses. So that the money from the tax goes directly to that welfare state. That is a socialist idea. This is a common mistake made by students. Socialism is not communism. And we're going to have to go back to my example of monopoly to kind of understand why. In socialism, you were still playing monopoly. You still had rich people, you still had poor people. The difference was that in capitalism, the rich got richer and the poor tended to get poorer. In socialism, the rich had to give more money than poor people to the government to divvy up in taxes. Um, in communism, there's none of that. The government owns everything and you probably don't even play Monopoly, if I'm honest. Everyone gets paid the same amount and it is distributed by the government regardless of the job that you have. So one might be a brain surgeon, might be a lorry driver, he might be a window cleaner. Doesn't matter what job you have, you get paid the same amount by the government. There's no competition because everything is equally shared and distributed to everyone by the government. Um, and Inspector Calls was actually first performed in the USSR. So before it was performed in England, it was performed in the USSR. And that was a communist state. And people often think that because of that, Priestley was very closely aligned with communism and socialism is quite similar to communism. And in a way it is. But Priestley wasn't a fan of communism. He didn't want us to become a communist country. He wanted us to be socialist. Um, in fact, when they, him and his wife went to the USSR to see an inspector calls being performed, his wife wrote complaining about how basic everything was. Because if you imagine that the government is distributing and deciding that everyone will have exactly the same type of car, exactly the same type of house, exactly the same type of clothes, there isn't going to be the same level of variety as there is in like typically capitalist states. So to sum up, capitalism is when you own your own stuff, you keep your own money, you're free to compete to gain more money, but you also run the risk of losing your money in that competition. Um, you're responsible for yourself in capitalism, and it's typically associated with right wing politics. So think Don Donald Trump is like key prime example of a capitalist. He thinks that everybody should just be entitled to get richer rather than have to think about other people and how they need to support other people. Whereas socialism is based on the government regulated ownership where taxes are used to create publicly owned businesses and services similar to the NHS. Um, and they believe in the idea of society, the idea of collective responsibility. We're looking after one another. 
and it's typically associated with the Labour Party in the UK. I hope that was helpful in explaining the difference between capitalism and socialism and how it's presented within the play. As usual, if you are confused or concerned about anything, please do get in touch with your class teacher.